Hello. Hey guys. All right, I'm gonna be a little bit ghetto. I'm gonna make sure this is clean. I'm sorry. Sorry. Hold on. It's clean. Hey. Hey, I'm going live tonight with David Michael Wyatt. So, we're excited about that. When he comes on, we are going to, I'm going to um, add him. And thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. You're an amazing vocal coach and vocalist. I've watched you for years. Thank you so much, Mr. Hi C. Hi, David is here. Um, hmm. Let's see. He is a beast. He is. So I said, let me, let me talk to this man. Okay, I am trying. There we go. Hello, man of God. What up? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for meeting with me. My um, compadre Hollywood. I'm out of town, so he's he's not here. He don't really like does these with me. I don't know if you've seen the other ones. Yeah, yeah. So it's just me for tonight. It's so nice meeting you. Yeah. Likewise, likewise. Thank you. So I wanted to talk to you because um, I actually got put on to you through um, Saucy Vocals. I think yeah. she, tagged, she tagged me one day in one of your videos, and then I just kind of started going through, and I was like, wow. That's phenomenal. <laughs> so I just kind of wanted to know more. The, the purpose of these conversations is really to just kind of, so, somebody put in the comments one time something that I think kind of encapsulates what we do. It's, um, you know that show Inside the Actor's Studio? I haven't seen that. Oh, Inside the Actor's Studio is, is um, oh gosh, I wish I could remember who the host was, but they, this man, um, he interviews like these A-list Hollywood actors, okay, and, it's, and 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 it's at a college in front of theater students, oh, nice. and so it really <laughs> is a conversation that's not like necessarily, you know, talking to the Hollywood actor, but it's talking more to um, the thespian in them, if that makes sense. You know that's, what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have we our conversation kind of usually veers more. Um, towards like the craft okay. as opposed to necessarily the business or the accolades and things like that. Not that those aren't discussed, but right. you know, when, so I'm, I'm a vocal professor. So right, Absolutely. I'm a vocal professor talking to a vocalist. You, you, you're, my, you're my vocal coach. <laughs> Am I? Oh, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you have a fantastic voice. So one of the things, I don't know much about you at all. So I wanted to take this opportunity to get more, to, to get more information about you. Now you're from Texas. I am. I was born, I was born in Texas, um, but I grew up on the West Coast. So uh, I grew up in Moreno Valley, Riverside, California. Um, I was born in Texarkana, Texas, which is a small city um, in Northeast Texas. So, but I've been in Houston for about 10 years now. Oh, nice. And yeah. you have a gorgeous wife. Oh, thank you. That's my little boo. You know what I'm saying? That's my little boo. <laughs> and, you're, and you have a beautiful son. Yeah. I love it. So congratulations on all of that. Thank you. Now, now let me ask you a question. So one of the things I noticed is you sing a lot in your falsetto. I do. Yeah. So has is that something that you discovered you were good at? Or was it somebody else that was just like do that you know what i'm saying Yo, or, this is, because i saw i saw a video of you when you were much younger and you yeah. were singing more in like your natural voice so what happened <laughs> so so here's the thing this is crazy i don't think i've ever talked about this um so as a kid you know i grew up in church and uh in church you're you're taught to hey sing sing sing, sing is what sing. you're taught to do sing sing um, regardless of, of technique, all that kind of stuff, they just want you to sing louder and louder is pain. just, if yo, it's painful, sing even harder. Just sing. So there is a belt and a natural voice that lives inside of me. But for the past, for the past probably about four years, it's been, it's been the lesser. Um, so I've always had the falsetto, but what's crazy is I had a manager years ago that told me to stop. 
And she was like, stop doing that. Don't, don't do that. Now, of course, this was, I was in church. So she was like, uh, don't do that no more. People don't, people don't want to hear that, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So I was extremely, extremely, extremely <laughs> discouraged. And um, I stopped doing false. So I just began to cultivate. And because I stopped doing false, I think I just began to force my range and force, force sound so even my 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 belt and my natural voice is high for a dude for sure. Um, so it was high when you were a kid, it, and I can still sing that song today, like in my natural voice. Um, but because that's just what I had to develop, that muscle is what I had to learn to develop. And I don't know if I did it properly or not, but um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it. Ago? That's what it kind of. You said this was four. Years, you said this was four years ago. No, well, the I've been doing I've been doing predominantly like falsetto singing for about four years. Ever since me and Toby, we did a uh, we did a, we did the first song that we did together was was when the whole which I would still go in and out of false, you know, when I sang in church and stuff like that, you know, um, but predominantly like singing full songs false that's that's never been a thing. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's never been a thing until about until about four years ago, yeah. So then how do you balance? How do you, do you balance that? Is that something you think about balancing at some point? Like, okay, you don't want to necessarily lose your muscle memory of your natural voice or what we call our, your modal voice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, how do you, do you make sure that you still work on those things? I do. I do now um, because the first tour that we did, I went back. Now, I've been hoarse probably twice in my life. Um, seriously that's that's facts now thank you lord for that but now I've had, I've had like vocal fatigue but typically like if if i can i'm very internal so i'm always paying attention so if i know i'm tired i'm not going to do and push it like i would you know but i've been hoarse twice well three times now so i did the when first when you say two. hoarse you mean like full-on laryngitis full on yeah can't sing and yeah. nothing yeah everything. i think i can i think i can count two or three times as well so so i um so after the first tour with toby I basically sang this whole whole tour, probably with the exception of maybe one song out of his set, uh, falsetto. You know, it was it was easy breezy. You know, because for me, falsetto is extremely easy um, and it's very fluent. But when I got back to church to try to sing, it was it was a wrap. You couldn't, <laughs> like, you couldn't engage. I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, like my voice was just it. It wouldn't work. It would not work. It was like I I put it in some type of shock or something. I don't know. Um, but that particular Sunday, it, it just went out the window. So what did you do? I just rested. No, no, no. I mean, like, so when did you realize the voice wasn't working? Were you already like about oh. to sing, but like, was the mic in your hand? It was, it was on the stage, like where it just stopped working. Now this has never happened to me. So I was just like, I think the Lord is trying to teach me something here, <laughs> you know? Um, how, did you, but, how did you navigate that? It just sounded I did. bad. Yeah, definitely sounded bad. Um, you know, I'm probably my own worst critic, but I think it was bad. You know, people can be like, you know, that ain't that ain't your norm. Um, so I just navigated through it and I just tried to talk through it. Um, I tried to explain the situation, but I typically try not to be that singer. <laughs> you know, that um, says, you know, listen with your heart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm I'm not at my best today. You know, who cares? Make all mistakes but, for love. Right. So yeah. So I did a lot of talking, um, a lot of low notes. Um, you know, and I just kind of navigated. I'm sorry, that's my son. Um, <laughs> you know, we at home. But yeah, so that's how I did it. That's how I made it through. Wow. No, and I, that was I two, have two um, services. I I have you know several male clients. And um, I have found that that's been the most difficult thing for them is um, balancing um, the muscle memory of the modal voice and the muscle memory of the falsetto. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, they find that once they work on one for a long period of time, the other one, it's like, even within the lesson, it's like, okay, we're going to work on your falsetto. Now. Okay, now we're going to jump the octave down. And it's like, yeah. whoa, but okay, let me... Let me recalibrate. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It, that's I started noticing. Like my my vocal transitions were rough. Like in my natural, in my chest voice, they they started becoming like rough to kind of maneuver through. And I was like, you know, um, I don't know what this is, you know. But then it it dawned on me. Like I was like, yo, this muscle is probably just just real weak right now. <laughs> mm. 
Okay, yeah. so so then daily you do exercises like even if you're speaking like do you, what do you do like humming exercises? Do you do what? I will do. Um, I, it's it's just it's it's just or in you my. Just sing. You yeah. have a really high talking voice, so I think you're natural. You're just a high singer. Period. Yes. Yes. This is this is very factual. This is true. Okay. I wish I could hear it. Like I can hear in your speaking voice. Like if that's your, I feel like you your speaking pitch might be higher than mine. Okay. No, I'm just no, I'm just saying. Like I can just hear. Like for you to like if you were to sing, you would probably sing in the same key or higher than what I would choose. Yeah. So, like, so <laughs> I've I've kind of developed. Um, You're a tenor. You know, tenor. I'm a tenor tenor. I'm definitely a tenor tenor. Um, yeah. So I've developed trying to, like, if I was at the house, just around the house, then uh, I would probably allow my, my, my register to drop. Um, but typically in stuff like this, when I'm trying to engage and be engaging, you know, I try to speak right and keep keep it lifted, you know, and try to talk. I love it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let me ask you this. Do you have formal training? Do I have formal training? Yeah. No. No, I don't have formal training. I, I went to Berkeley College of Music for about two years. Okay. Um, I, I can't say, I mean, I'm Berkeley, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a contemporary jazz school. Um, very, very uh, cliquish and, um, you know, they, the professors and stuff have their favorites. And then if you don't know, if you're not taught to go in and pull everything that you want out of it, they're not going to just they're not gonna just give it to you, you know? So. You kind of have to, from what I understand, the, the ones that, that end up doing really well are the ones that kind of walk in as artists. Yeah. So then that things are kind of tailored for them a lot easier because it's like you can already see the direction, but if you just come in and you're just kind of a blank slate, it may be Yeah, harder. yeah, exactly. They're just gonna throw random things and yeah. Yep. So it's almost like, so so going into Berkeley, I feel like what makes Berkeley maybe different from other music schools is you would think, because it's a temp contemporary school, it's almost, you almost think, it almost functions like artist development. Huh. Like, it's almost like when people graduate from there, you kind of, they kind of expect to be a contemporary artist. Yes. Versus just... So I can see, I can, I can agree with that. I can agree with that because I do feel like that the school is designed to, um, to just kind of, even if you go a semester, you're, you're considered alumni. So you, 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 it's designed to kind of just throw you out there into the industry, you know? Um, and like you said, so it probably is more artist development, honing you as a professional, uh, whatever you are, instrumentalist, art and singer, whatever you, you're going for. Hmm. I had another question. So, so you you sing with you sing with Toby. So you talked about two things: church and Toby. What was there an in between, or did you go? Would, did Toby pluck you straight from church? <laughs> yeah, he definitely <laughs> plucked me straight from church. Oh, um, so so here's the thing. So, like I said, I grew up a church kid. Um, when I went to Berkeley is where this started kind of opening up for me. I started feeling the call and started seeing my gift function outside of the church. Um, now, church is basically kind of all I know, you know, because I did grow up in church. But I once I got to Berkeley and I'm singing to what's up, Saul? Uh, solo in the building. That's a, another guy that sings with us. Sorry. Hi, Simon. Um, he's a beast. He's in Atlanta now, too. Uh, oh, look cool. him up. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I grew up in church. But once I got to Berkeley, I started seeing how my gift functioned outside of church. And um, and it just not to sound churchy, but really how God was using me and kind of showing me like that your gift. This is this is kind of the the the, the, the design um, that I have for your gift. So I started trying to pray about that and trying to embrace it. And it took a while for me to even quote unquote detach from the church. <laughs> um, I'm never detached, you know. It's in my heart, but I'm saying as far as my gifting and singing and all that kind as of stuff. As far as your career, like your career isn't going to be worship leader. That's yeah, not leader. exactly, exactly. So once I kind of started wrapping my my mind around it. God started setting it up, and let us see. Uh, let us see's team called me. Is how it ended up happening, and that was my first like outside. Oh, of I can imagine tour. your voice complimenting her very well. Yeah, yeah, oh, it was. Goodness. It was. It's, it's, it was a beautiful situation. Beautiful. So you went on tour with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness! When did you go on tour with her? I toured. I toured the Let Love Rule tour. 
What years was that? What year? That was uh, 20, 20, what is this, 20, 2020? 20, 20, 2017, 18? Something like okay. that. Okay. Because I don't know if you know Denitra Moore. I know she toured with her too. I do know Denitra. Yeah. Yeah. She, I, I know her because I did Sunday Best. <laughs> oh, you did Sunday Best? Oh, my God. Yeah, this is amazing. She's, I, the first time I heard her, we had first moved to Atlanta. And yeah. she was singing with like 10 other people. <laughs> and she had to be like 18 at the time. Yeah. This was easily 15 years ago. And she, I was just like, that girl is phenomenal. She doesn't belong up there with those people, you know? She's amazing. <laughs> and amazing. my first... Um, my very first song, I Need You, I would, I demanded that she was my BGB. Like, the only wow. other singer on my song was Denitra. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Denitra, that's all I need. Thank you. I actually yes. I trusted her so much, I left the studio to make a phone call. She did She did all my stacks by the time I got Wow. Her. That's okay. what's up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yo, she's, she's incredible. incredible. She is she's really incredible. 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 So, back to you. So, your first thing was Love to See. Yes. And then from Let Us See, um, Tobe hit me up, which I've known Toby for years. Toby is legit like my brother. Um, so, so where is he from? Is he from California? Or he's born and oh, raised in Kentucky. Yeah. He's Houston. Houston. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so he hit me up, wanted to work on a song. Um, we did this song and, and the song was, was, was actually really good, you know, <laughs> and, and it just kind of started snowballing and, we started doing other songs. Those songs turned into tours. And yeah, so am I late on the Toby train? Because I just found out about him like 30 days ago or something. That's the, you found out about him. The, the mint situation is when you found out. The minty heaven is when you found out about him. We have on all the, the mint colors. I don't know. It's like, to me, he just he's, he's wearing all white all the time. So it's mint. It probably looks like it's all white, but it's actually oh, like it's a. Not a white. It's, it's not now. So so here's the thing. We did the tour before the mint was we we did do white. Oh wow! Yeah. So okay. he's he's gone. He's he's been around. He's been around. Um, we did a song together called "I'm Dope." I'm Dope came out. Oh shoot! When did I'm Dope come out? Maybe maybe tw maybe 2018. Um, I can't Hi, remember Sorry, nothing. <laughs> Look, she said, "Mint, it's mint, Ashley." <laughs> yeah, so um, I think maybe 2018, I'm dope came out. I can't remember the year, but um, he had been, but he had been putting out music even before then. So he's been doing it for a little bit. Awesome. Okay. So um, have you gone on tour with other artists? I've done. Um, I've done gospel tours. I did. Um, I've toured with. Uh, so when did you do Sunday Best? I did Sunday, oh God, I did Sunday Best, uh, season six. That was, oh, that Tasha, was Tasha, Tasha Page Lockhart, yeah, it was a minute. It was the winner. Uh, Sunday Best was an experience for me, you know, but I did do it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I live yeah. in Atlanta, so. I know so many people that have been on Sunday Best. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Man, let me stop. Let me pause though, because I didn't. I didn't. My son was just leaving out of the room, so he distracted me a little bit. I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity. Um, it was definitely saucy vocals that connected us. Um, I don't. I don't know her name yet, but I'm. I'm gonna find out. But Nifa. Nifa. It was definitely Nifa that connected us. I went to your page, and I was like, wait a minute. Like the stuff that you were saying, how you were saying it, how you were connecting with people and virtually kind of schooling us, you know, I thought that that was absolutely incredible. And um, kudos to you for doing what you're doing. Um, I definitely know that your students are legit blessed by by what you what you pour into them. That is so nice of you to say yeah. that. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yeah, I meant to say that from jump, but yo. It's got be the glory. Yeah, it's dope. Amen. And you and you're a freaking you yeah, you're a freaking beast too. You're incredible. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, y'all so sweet giving all the hearts or whatever. Thank you. They know what it is. They know what it is. So we see all of your 
And the thing is, I love connecting with people. I've always wanted to collaborate with people. And I'm so glad that I don't, I, I guess, I don't know if it's the pandemic or what, people, people are now willing to connect with other people on their platforms, other singers. Mm -hmm. We don't feel like we have to be islands. And, you know, I look at it like, you know, we can all help each other if we all just network with each other. Like, I, the, what I was going to say is, if you look at a street, Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, they're all on the same street. They're not like, uh, yeah. I ain't about to be across the street from Wendy's. I ain't about yeah. to be on the same street of, as Burger King. Uh-uh, I, I want three streets <laughs> over. I want that to be my street. They <laughs> understand that if they are yeah. all in the same proximity, they all win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So that's yes. just what I've always thought. So I'm always grateful when people see the value in connecting with me. Because that's something I've wanted to do for like 10 years now. So I appreciate you connecting with me. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've been online coaching or whatever since 2009. And so this is something I've always wanted wow. to do. This is something I've always wanted to do. That's what yeah. Yeah. Even when right. I started when I started doing vocal analyses, I really was reaching out to artists wanting to do interviews with them, but they didn't want to do one with me. So I just <laughs> So I just was like, I was scared of you. Talk about you. I want to talk to you, but <laughs> Yeah, well, praise God. Yeah, man. But um so so let's talk uh, I wish I could collab with him. Oh, people want to collaborate with you. Listen, Who's so that? what are you doing? Somebody was saying they What's want to up, collaborate with you. What do I um, You said wait? No, no, no. I was listening. I thought you said Oh, my bad. Okay. So, uh Hit as me far up, brother. as recording like future stuff, like I see that you're, you know, you record covers a lot and everything. Um, is there something like an EP for yourself that you're trying to do or right now are you just like collaborating and you know helping yeah we are people? we are finally we are finally trying to focus on on an EP so yeah okay. we've actually we've started uh, so that's been that's been extremely exciting yeah so that's it's gonna be like experimental R&B what is that? Experimental R and B. What's experimental R and B? I guess you would say like Brandy is kind of experimental R and B. You guys give me some other names. I want to say hmm. like the new kids on the block. Okay. They're, okay. They're more, I don't know. Some of Chris uh, Brown's song is more experimental. I don't know. It just doesn't have the same. To me, it's all synthesized. I don't know if that's what makes so, it experimental. <laughs> I, I still I love I love real singing I love uh, I love real artistry you know what I'm saying and I'm not saying that those guys aren't <laughs> you know singing for real um, exactly this is that's this 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 line I, right I here say my music I like experimental R and B but I feel like my I need my music to be a lot more like like tangible like you need to be able to feel like oh there's okay. horns in there. So you know that's I mean? exactly that's exactly and that's that's what that's what that's the main reason why I feel like Toby and I mesh and connect so well because he's the same way even as a rapper like he would probably be considered like a conscious rapper um so I don't know what that that looks like for a singer but those are the messages and those are the vibes that I would definitely be presenting um in this journey I've learned what type of gift I have and um so i'm i'm really legit trying to maximize on like this uh who is that danielle daniele oh don't let me jack your name up i'm sorry uh daniel it might just be daniel i don't know but daniel <laughs> just just maximizing on these on these velvet vibes like i feel like that's a that's a complete thing that's a complete package for for what god has put in my gift so i want to be able to express that through through this ep let me just say i love that you um are free because the Bible says who the sun sets free is, is, is free indeed. We, yeah. we are bound by religiosity in order to prove our salvation or commitment to Christ. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a posture of the heart. And I think so many times singers feel obligated um, to the church to use our musical gifts in the church. And if we're not doing that, then we're not serving. And it's like, you know, I would make a great Sunday school teacher. I would make... <laughs> Like, seriously, I, I would make a great usher. Like, I yeah. would. I don't have to sing to serve. Right. 
Like, right. like, give me five minute apologetics. I promise you, like, I would kill. I don't, I don't have to sing. Like, I use my get. Like, I tell my pastor all the time. I use, I, I teach singing five days a week. Like, sometimes eight hours a day. A lot of wow. times, like, yeah. on the weekends, the last thing I want to do is sing. Or yeah. teach anybody how to sing. Like, yeah. I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? And so, it's a beautiful thing when you can kind of break free from those religious expectations um, to truly live the life that God planned for you. Cause you're not, you're not doing anything right now, especially mm -hmm. the fact that, like you said, once you've settled in it and accepted that this is what God has for you, how yeah. the world just kind of God, everything just kind of opened up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if yeah. you had to fight your way through and everything just kept happening wrong and you kept having to compromise who you were in Christ in yeah. order to do it then you know that it's not God. But when something happens and it completely aligns with who you are in Christ, with the new yeah. creature that you are, then you know that's a gift yes. from the Lord. And that's something God wants you to accept, to step into, to walk in, to fully take on. And in order to do that, we have to be free from those expectations of what will church people say? I can't be there every Sunday. Right. I Well, what are they going to say if I don't lead the praise team anymore? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, our gift was meant to bless who? Like, some people's gift was meant to bless the church. Yeah, and yeah. that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But other yeah. people were gifted and yeah. have the Holy Ghost and are meant to bless the world. Yep. Yeah, and I think I think that that was the hardest part for me because, like I said, all I really knew was church, and um, and I think it's it's extremely important for 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 leaders. Um, and I know that it I can't sum up every leader, but there there are a few leaders that really teach like being yourself and being okay, um, and and being free enough to kind of just go do what it is that God called you to do. Like you said, everybody has a lane. Everybody is not mm -hmm. a worship leader, but I have a ton of friends who I know love leading worship and love don't, it. and don't want to come do any stuff that I'm doing. You know, and they're and they're very successful. They're succeeding in it. So I think it's a beautiful thing to know your place in 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 life. Period. <laughs> so I think it took me a long time to kind of figure that out because I had to break away from it. And I hate to say break away from it because I don't want people to think I don't go to church. Yeah, and it's not that you don't want to go to church. It's not that you wouldn't lead worship, but that's yeah. not like you're not trying to make that your vocation. Like God it's, has and, and, and it's other and at the end of the day, for me, I feel like. It's probably just inclusive yeah. of all the other things that God has for you. And it's just it's just a call. It's just a call. I see more impact, the, my gift being more impactful in, in, in outside of the four walls of the church. It's the craziest thing to be singing in a bar and somebody come up to you and be like, hey, oh, my God. You know, they however they describe it, you give, me goose, goose, you give me goosebumps. You make me want to go to heaven. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it it's, it's stuff like that that I'm – keeps me keeps me grounded for sure and just keeps me on the right path what's up babe that's my wife in here shout out to my wife hi Ms. wife <laughs> coda said hi daddy what's sean? up yeah that's sean sean Aww, flower what's up saucy vocals hey yeah. ashley <laughs> said you can't retire from leading praise and worship yeah never you never outgrow that listen, <laughs> you, you, listen my life is my life is leading praise and worship so I just, you know I just recorded, uh, I just did a live recording last week, and I was telling my friends the songs on there, and it's like Secular Christmas, Christian <laughs> Christmas. I did Valentine stuff, I did R&B stuff, and they're like, that's eclectic. I'm like, I don't understand it. I'm a, I'm an opera singer. Do you yeah. understand how far <laughs> that is from gospel and praise and worship? Why wouldn't I do everything in between? Like, I'm at two extremes at this yeah. point. You know, yeah. I've never, I've never questioned singing everything because if you go to school, you have to literally sing everything. Yep. So I don't, I don't box myself in. Yes, the music that I may record may be gospel music, but that doesn't mean I'm your worship leader. That doesn't mean I'm trying to get. I'm, I'm not gonna go back and forth with nobody's church about yeah. singing Sunday morning. That's fine if my music is a Sunday morning music. I, I. I accept it. It's okay. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Take your Sunday morning music. I don't need to. I don't need to do that. There's enough of that. I yeah. like what I've made, and I want somebody to be able to listen to it on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Or Monday, for Christ's sake. Listen, it's, it's, you know it's true, man. Everybody has their place. Everybody has their purpose. And it's a beautiful thing when we find our lane. Because once you find your lane, 
I found that you find your people. Yeah. You That's find it. it's like you find your people, you find your producers that understand you, you find your singers, it's like you find your audience. Yeah, you find your audience. You find your audience and it's like I don't have to put on, I don't have to yep. put on airs, I don't have to quote directly from songs, you know what I'm saying? Yo, oh, and it's it's, it's such a oh, it's, such it's a, a stress thing. reliever because a, because you learn, you you, you I had to learn church and that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to have to learn something because I also had to learn to sing outside of church, but to the, to the point of becoming something that you're not and being forced to be something that you're not, that's, that's when you treading in dangerous territory because now I ain't going to have no voice to be able to do what it is that I'm really supposed to do because it's shot now. Are you going to be, are you going to be afraid? You know, it's like, Oh, is this, Oh my gosh, you just don't know yeah. the amount of bondage that I've had to come out of the amount yeah. of just, the amount of bondage <laughs> to yep. like undo in order to just be me. And it's like, wow, I'm here and I'm still <laughs> saved. And I know more about God now than I did back then when I was trying to look like I know God yep. you know, through all of these outward expressions that I thought were necessary. So, yeah, like I said, that's a, I can't wait to hear your EP. Yeah, I think just... I mean, I just have a feeling it's going to be very soothing. Oh yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's gonna be very soothing. Um, I'm I'm excited about it. I can't I can't wait for people to hear it. Um, it's not it's not a stretch from what we've been doing and what people have kind of learned me as. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to kind of to be able to really just start carving this niche of who David Michael Wyatt really is. I love it. So, yeah. um, does anyone have any questions? Looks like you have a lot of people on here that love you by the way Listen, they, are, they are big you <laughs> up they absolutely yeah. adore you if anybody has any questions you should ask That's what's i love that you went on sunday best <laughs> do you yeah do you love it i love it <laughs> yeah, i tried sunday out for best. sunday best um once and i think i made it to like the second round it was like i made it through the first one and then i made it to the second one and um, it was kind of like out of 50 people in the room, they asked me to sing again. And it was like between me and this other guy. And I think the main producer wanted the other guy, but the two ladies were like, do you know who she is? You know, she, <laughs> you know, they were like trying to fight for me. So then I didn't know all this was going on until afterward. Cause I knew who they were. So they told yeah. me, we know you, you're from YouTube. We really wanted you, but he wanted the other guy. We're so sorry. But like, <laughs> but like, I was stupidly sang a song that hadn't even cried. You know, like like audition one oh one, don't right. do this. It was exactly what I did. <laughs> I I chose a song that I hadn't even thought about all day because it was like, oh well, you come back up and sing. Why didn't I just sing the same song or sing another hymn? Instead, I was like, Everything that you've been worried about, put it on the outside. <laughs> that was so stupid. Yeah. That's a trick. They put that yeah, song as like, a trick. Well, I'm going home. And they were like, yeah, we're bringing the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, my Sunday best experience. Um, so I had no desire to do Sunday best, right? So I was, I was there with some friends. And I can't lie and say in the back of my mind, I didn't wonder, do I have what it takes to be Sunday best? You know, <laughs> so I found myself going through, through, the, through the stages of it. Um, and I got right before the TV judges and I said, huh, okay. I figured it out. I, I got what I wanted to wanted to know. And I tried to leave. I was good. Um, the people that I came with didn't make it as far as I did. So they were outside waiting. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> so I was like, all right, um, let's just go. So I'm good. So this guy stopped me, who at the time I didn't know was a producer of the show. And he stopped me and he was like, uh, he was like, man, where are you going? What you doing? They, they, they want to hear you. Kirk want to hear you, you know, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. So I don't want to say blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. That's so rude and considerate. But <laughs> so the, he, he gave me that story, um, ended up on the show from, from him finding me and me realizing that like my story started beating me before I got to like certain interviews. I went back knowing that they were going to call me for the show and um, they called me for the show. And um, I made it to top six, and I was ready to go home, and they definitely sent me to the house. <laughs> Why? What do you mean you were ready to go home? Because, I, like I said, I never had a desire to do that. Like, I really, I'm, I'm not, um, 
there, I think it's dual. So at the time I did Sunday Best, I don't think mentally I was ready. I was, I definitely was not ready. Um, so it could have been God blocking it. Secondly, I don't think it was what I needed to be doing. Like that wasn't the the vein that I felt like. Or yeah. I, don't, I can't even at the time I can't say I felt like that. But look, hindsight, looking back, I know that that wasn't the vein that I would have I would have fell fallen in love with. I love it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for. I, I don't know if anybody had any questions. Let me see. Yeah. No. What's up, Madison? I think Yo, they that's... just love you. They just love Yo. your voice. I almost want to ask you to sing, but don't, don't do know. that. Don't do that. Don't okay, do that. You, from a singer to a singer, you know. This this uh. <laughs> right. David and Brian McKnight need to have a breathy vocals off. Oh, That's someone hilarious. asked your vocal influences. That's a great question. Uh, who are some of my vocal influences? Daryl Coley. Oh. Um, I grew up, I definitely grew up like on the Daryl Coley's, the Clark sisters, um, Stevie Wonder, uh, Luther Vandross. Um, I actually like Usher. I grew up in the Usher. I, why you gotta say actually? I like Usher. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I didn't mean actually. You see how words, how we just use words so loosely. I love us, you know, like I do. Yeah. Um, who else? Um, so those are probably, I love, I also love people, people think it's crazy, but I love Celine Dion. I um, love her. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, well, she's, she's freaking incredible. If you can get that, well, she's incredible. She's incredible, incredible, incredible. Like her, she her, is. No, her to voice. To me, her and Barbara Streisand, it's like, See, you get it. This is why you the vocal coach. You get it. Oh, you yeah. Get it. They're you like impossible. It. Like their technique is, is completely, I don't want to say flawless, but like, yo, no, I, no, I, it I, it's, it's, right. I'll be like, oh, you, you really did that. Like, yeah. like with your eyes open and just, you're just, it's good. <laughs> yeah. Barbara Streisand has to be like, I'm the most difficult person to try to sing her music. Like, yeah. songs are so hard. Yeah, because you have to have an incredible voice and an incredible level of musicianship, like an incredible mm -hmm. ear. Because she changes time signatures, she changes keys, like she does so many. Crazy and she things. paints. She paints the picture. She 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 creates. She sings with so much character. Like I love somebody that can sing with character. Like oh, yeah. you, you're singing color as you're coloring. You know what I'm saying? As yeah. you're whatever note it is, like that kind of stuff. I'd be like, yo, yeah. <laughs> Celine Dion's amazing. Celine Dion's amazing. Yeah. So who else? Um, Yolanda Adams. I love yo yo. Um, who else? Um, of course, Brandy. Um, but the crazy thing, I didn't grow up listening to Brandy. Um, I didn't. I didn't start falling in love with Brandy. I think until I went to college. And what was that? I don't know how old you are. Yeah, I was 29. No, I was in 2019. That was when did I go to 2009. 2009. I was gonna say, whoa, how old are you? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. I didn't really. I mean, I grew up on Brandy. Me and Brandy are maybe three years apart. You know. Yeah. So most I feel of, like most I grew of, up with her, huh? Most of my people like they they were shocked that I I didn't know all I knew. Yeah, was but I, I mean, I always loved Brandy's music, but I don't think I ever really saw her as a vocalist she <laughs> is. Yo, yo, Yolanda Adams. Until Full Moon. You know, Full Moon is when I just was like, and when you look, when you look back, I, I, I think that um, uh, uh, is it Have You Ever? Mm -hmm. uh, or or um, not Have You Ever? Every time you build me. Is it Have You Ever? No, Angel in Disguise. Da, 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 da. To me, that was like the precursor to mm -hmm. to uh, Full Moon. That kind of let you know where she was going. You know, looking back, you're just like, oh, she did give us a hint. <laughs> but I, we, I just felt so sideswiped when that came out. I was like, whoa, what is going on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Who else? You have uh, great influences. Do you love, I would love to, you know what I would love to hear you sing? What? A Donny Hathaway song. I love Donny Hathaway. Oh um, my God. Very few men can capture Donny Hathaway's delivery. I always sing the uh, Someday We'll All Be Free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that on your page already? Probably a snippet. <laughs> oh my gosh. I yeah. can just imagine how beautiful your voice would be in that. Yeah. 
she I, I, I like Donnie. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, somebody asked something else. Delisa is Tina's vocal twin. That's so funny. <laughs> I feel like I'm a mix of of Erica and Tina. Like Air, Air I have Erica is like more of her. Um, I have more of her tone. This who Mary Mary? Yeah. You're talking about the Marys? Okay. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people compare me to them. <laughs> really? Yeah, they're just like okay. you, that was like if you really listen, it, I am kind of imitating Tina Campbell. But <laughs> Tina, Tina's a beast, though. Tina's amazing. I just don't have her range, but I use her moves. You, yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. Where are, you, where are you from originally? Oh, my goodness. That's a long story. Okay. <laughs> I'm British. You're British? I am. Okay. I'm English, um, but I always say my grandparents are Jamaican. So my grandparents are Jamaicans who emigrated to England in the late 50s. Wow. And so they had all of my aunts and uncles. And then, um, well, except one. They ha I have one aunt who's like proper Jamaican. And then I have the rest <laughs> of that. Yeah, proper. You hear how it comes out, right? <laughs> and, then, um, and then, like, the rest of my aunts and uncles are very, very English. Um, and then my mom had us three in England as well, me, my brother, and my sister. And then we moved to the States. So then I was raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Wow. Okay. But okay. I was raised in a very English Jamaican environment. Like, <laughs> I didn't even know. I I don't think I really met many Black Americans, even though I'm sure they were here. Whenever yeah. somebody was just like, I was, because I was like, "Where are you from?" And they're like, "Here." I'm like, "What do you mean here?" You know? <laughs> because living in Fort Lauderdale, everybody is from Jamaica, Trinidad, Haiti, Puerto Rico. You know, nobody's <laughs> from here. You know? Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I went to grew up in Jamaican churches, you know, all of, I don't even know how, but my, my mom, my aunts and my uncles, they all found other British people with Jamaican yeah. parents. It's like, well, how do English people find each other? You know? Yeah. So yeah, I'm very English, very Jamaican. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just, um, I changed my accent for the world because I don't know. <laughs> So were you into hip hop prior to working with Toby? That's a good question. Mm -mm. Nope. Um, I was not a hip hop head. I did not grow up listening to hip hop. Um, Toby was definitely probably my first like real introduction to hip hop. Of course, I knew like uh, the hot, the, the radio, the radio hip hop. But yeah. like deep heart underground stuff. Nah, Toby, they be they laugh all the time because I, I they'll say something. I'm just like, what? Yeah, well, right over your head. You're a you're a church singer. Period. I'm a church singer, if man. If you made I'm a, a joke boy. about Hezekiah, I would have got it. Listen, and I that's what I tell them. <laughs> they talk about they, they may have started singing a song, and I was and I'm just like, you know, I don't really know this. I think I've heard it, but but if you start singing anything in church, I bet you won't miss me. Right. Right. <laughs> So, so, so your wife is hilarious. She said, no. "Let the, she said, let them know that uh, she's your biggest influence." Oh, <laughs> she is. That's that's. You uh, influence somebody said, "How is your voice so amazing? We love you, Solomon and David. We need that duet." That's Some, funny. Somebody said, "Mahalia Jackson." I guess they're asking if that's your inspiration. Oh, uh, let me see. Mahalia Jackson. What awesome microphone do you use? Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, do it you was. Play I do. Keys? I, I have that. I don't play keys. I wish I did, but I don't. Look, I, I, I have a piano, but I, I can't really play it. <laughs> David Phelps. I think I know David Phelps. Isn't he that white tenor? David Phelps. Is doesn't he? He always sings "Fall on Your Knees," right? Somebody said we should check out David Phelps. Oh, David Phelps. Is he in the um Gaither thingy? Southern Southern gospel. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I think yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Both okay. of y'all can answer, but if someone did a, a bio flick of your singing career, who would you want to play as you? What? Of my singing career? Um, who would I want to sing to play me in my, as as I don't know. Who would I want to play as me? Huh. Uh in a biopic? Who would I want to play as me? Whitney Houston. All right. <laughs> All right, let me see what you can answer, but if someone did a bio play. <laughs> Who would you want to play as you? Hmm. I don't know. That's that's a hard one. Um, 
I'm trying to think like, how do you pick that? Do I pick somebody like younger? Oh, no, exactly. I'm like trying to think who sounds like me, but I can only think of who I found, who I've emulated. So it's like, I guess Whitney. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's anybody that, I, I mean, that's, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know. I, I need, yeah. Uh, right, I guess so. me, that's my, my the movie about me and I'm okay with that. Right. Typically, like they making biopics when you're when you're older, right? So maybe my son, my son could do it. <laughs> Man, my daughter, if she ever decides to sing, <laughs> light comes from David's mouth. But these people adore you, David. Did you know that? I, I'm, do you I'm get grateful. all these inboxes? Do you get all these messages in your inbox? Light I... comes out of your mouth when you sing. <laughs> 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 is this is this what your DMs look like? This is it's not you would be it's really not at least not you know some DMs you just don't go in so uh, in the section that I see it's not. Um, I want Let to be very see. careful how I say this but David Phelps. You're amazing. amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. Definitely oh, saucy. So, okay I do think uh, there's a couple of what is your favorite song? But my boy name? my homeboy on here has uh huh. Oh, I don't have one. Um, it's ch it changes. I won't say I don't have one. It changes. But let me go back. There was a real question from my 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 friend on here, Madison. Who shout out to him. He's an amazing vocalist here in Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. um, Hi, Houston. Vocal arranger. Houston in the house. Yeah, vocal arranger. Everything. If you see him on here, peep his page. He's yeah, he's a beast. For sure. Um, I think he said. No, I've seen it. It's say? like M E D I C I N. I've been seeing yeah. that name. I'm like, oh, that's a different way of spelling it. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. He's he's dope. Um, how do you find your range, vocal coach? How do you find your range? <laughs> hey, wow! Did you do that? Come on, vocal coach. I'm here to learn tonight. <laughs> how do you find your range? I mean, the most base. I, I don't really know. When you say range, I almost feel like that's a loaded question. Like you really mean to ask me, how do you find your tessitura or something like that? So your vocal. Your See what I'm saying? Come on, talk to us. <laughs> oh my God. So your vocal range is is literally just you have to think very dry version of how high can you go and how low can you go. And you literally find that by singing until singing high until ah uh, until it does that. And then uh until it does that. Until you yeah. fry out on both ends, voila, you have found your vocal range. Um I don't but if you want to find good. huh? I said, that's good. Fry it on both ends. That's good. Right. Thank you. So, okay. So I think what so you made. So I think what you're trying to say is how do you find your usable range or your tessitura? And that's something different. Your tessitura is the group of notes that you're most comfortable singing in. And that is different for everybody, regardless of their vocal type. So then you have the vocal type. Some people, when they say, how do I find my range? They're really asking, what is my vocal type? Right. Am I a soprano? Am I, am I a mezzo? Am I a tenor? All that. So sometimes. That's what people mean when they ask that question. So the way that you figure that out, number one, you have to develop your voice because as you develop your voice, your type seems to change. But really, it's not changing. It's just you're gaining more access to notes that you wouldn't have had access to before because you didn't have the proper technique to access those notes. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I, like, I don't, I don't ascribe to the idea of, your range increasing. It's not that your range, you always had that range. It's yeah. just you had too much tension to ever reach those, you know what I'm saying? To ever access those notes. So what we what we do in vocal training is we teach you how to release tension, like tongue tension, throat tension, soft palate, all of that. Get all of those mechanisms working and I call it like a dance. They have there's a coordination that has to happen with your diaphragm, the breath pressure, all of that stuff. <laughs> and as that happens, you begin to gain access to your full range. So once you've gained access to your full range, this could take a year, this could take two years of vocal training, then we can say, okay, now what do we have? We've developed this instrument. Now I know what the yeah. highest note is, what the lowest note is. Where does this start to break? Where is this, where's this person fully in chest? And when do they start going through the zona di passaggio, which is where the voice <laughs> starts. <laughs> Yo, this is great. This is so good. Hi, Toby. Okay. <laughs> so then. Oh, Lord. Get, get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so then you start.
start going on the zona di passaggio, which is, okay, you have these zones of your voice where your voice is starts, it's transitioning. For women, the, we, we have a whole zona di passaggio. It's so funny. Women think we have like two notes of passaggio, but we really have like an octave of passaggio. Right? Would that be called the same thing as, as your mixed voice or exactly. is this different? Exactly. So that's okay. where you're mixing. So it's like you have full chest and then you have a whole octave where you're bound you have you're doing this balancing act of chest and head and then yeah. you hit like an e5 if you're a soprano and then all of a sudden everything's in head voice yeah so listen hold on let me tell toby said who teaching who listen toby this is this is who you want to listen to right here <laughs> listen to the listen to her get these techniques <laughs> <laughs> hello toby you're fantastic thank you for joining us um but yeah so so I said all of that to say, so then based on where those passaggio zones happen, um, that's where you figure out, am I a mezzo or am I a soprano? Because a mezzo and a soprano, they're probably going to have very similar ranges, maybe a half step to a whole step difference as far as range. But where their voice is really heavy and rich and where it blossoms, those are, those are going to be different. So okay. a, a, a soprano, their voice usually blossoms up higher. A mezzo, it booms a lot lower. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's how you figure out your vocal range is figuring out your passaggio. So now we figure out our tessitura. That's the third. That's the third thing. So <laughs> tessitura refers to where. Okay, I have all this range. I figured all that out. I'm a soprano, boom. Where am I most comfortable? Am I a coloratura soprano? Am I a lyric soprano? Am I a spinto soprano? Am I a dramatic soprano? Hey. Right? <laughs> what kind of soprano am I? Right? So the way that we figure that out, <laughs> what? Toby said, tell her about my perfect Come on, pitch. we've been talking about it this whole time, honey. We know you got perfect pitch. Good night, bro. <laughs> So then Tessitura is where am I most comfortable? And I like to I like to compare it to they may have the exact same vocal range, but they have different tessituras. One is very comfortable singing really high, one is more comfortable singing in the middle. But they have the same range. But it's mm. important to find out what your tessitura is because that's where your voice is gonna be the most agile. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna like you have the most choices. So, for example, I'm a lyric soprano technically, but if you mm -hmm. notice, I sing everything low because my testatura sits a lot lower. Whereas some people with my exact same range, I can hit an E6 like anybody else. I can do a whistle like anybody else. But where am I Come on. comfortable? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I'm singing, especially even classical music, I'm not that soprano that's just gonna be floating up high, high, high all the time. Yeah. Right? I'm not that kind of soprano. So finding your tessitura is something different. You figure out where are you most tired after an hour and where are you energized after an hour. And that's mm. how you figure out where your tessitura is. <gasps> Yo, that was great. See what I'm saying? This is, listen, this is why you're the coach, man. Thanks. That was beautiful. <laughs> I would have just been like, um. Yeah, that's why when people ask, I saw that question and I acted like I didn't see it because it was a loaded question. My bad, my but bad. That's like, my oh, boy, though. That's then, my boy, though. That's my friend. <laughs> that's my boy. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that was good, though. That's that's amazing. And and I'm sure he can take that. Like, I can definitely take that. He's a, he's a great singer, for real. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. 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 So I am so glad. How do you spell it? Testitura. T E S S I T U R A. Your testitura. These are all like Italian terms. Madison went and Googled it. <laughs> Vocal phases you went through when you were younger. Yeah. Like, did your voice break? Is, is your voice lower than it was when you were 12? Um, my speaking voice. My speaking voice is lower than I was when I was 12. I can still legit sing the same high notes, though. That's a great question. I, beginner here. OK, so all right. So this has turned into like a vocal technique thing. Great. So this is great. This is great. I love it. Beginner here. I hear something completely <laughs> different when I play back my voice. Should I stay away from vocals? I can my ears one day hear what's real. OK, Danin, I think that's your name. Dan, I'll, I'll call you Dan. Um, 
if you're recording yourself, you got to remember, it's so funny because I get this question a lot. Like, if I sing live and then I go in the studio and it doesn't sound the same, what do I do? Well, the studio or any kind of recording is just a mirror. It tells you what you've sounded like the whole time. Okay? <laughs> so... You have to accept, this is how I sound. This is how the world hears me, regardless of how good it feels coming out of me. This mm. is what is actually being heard. And so we have to kind of separate ourselves from our emotions and separate ourselves. Um, we, have to se we have to become true musicians and say, like, treat your voice like you would treat a trombone or a violin. It's, yeah. so, so I think, I think of the reason why a lot of people can't progress in singing is because if my voice isn't good, I'm not good. You mm. know what I'm saying? If 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 my voice can isn't good enough to to get that gig, I'm not good enough to get that gig. And we got to separate ourselves and learn some skills. No, I'm not skilled enough to get that gig. I don't have the skills that it takes to do this. So how do I get skills? You got to do ear training. You know, yeah. you. I honestly think every person, especially as a beginner, needs to learn piano or guitar. Some sort of instrument that has exact pitch on it so you can sing along while you play. Because the mm -hmm. more you hear proper pitches, not quarter tones, but real half steps apart, it properly tuned, the more you will sing in tune. That's good. That is great. So that is great. So what is your what is your mind? You kind of hit at it and answered it. What is your thought on um, a person not sounding like what they hear? in their head um meaning is my voice different i guess this is along the same lines of the same question but you know like i've been told before um you don't sound like you sound to us in your head you know what i'm saying does that make any sense to you somebody said that to you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean they weren't telling me that it was it was bad or good or anything like that so, how do you think your voice is do you think your voice is heavy um, no, I don't think my voice is heavy. Okay. I don't think I don't think my voice is heavy. Um, yeah, I don't think my voice is heavy. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. So, so to me, there's different degrees. You have to. I I have to know who you're talking about. If you're talking about an elite singer saying, oh, "My voice is so hoarse today, and it's it's just so scratchy," and then you sing and you blaze it, people are like me, <laughs> crazy. Like you killed that. What are you talking about? You thought you sounded bad, and you blazed it. Whereas you have the other end of the spectrum where the person really doesn't sound good and they think they sound like Janet Jackson, but they sound <laughs> like a squeaking rat. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. it's just like, I sound like Janet Jackson. No, you do not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like yeah. what end of the spectrum are we talking about? Like meet me in the middle there. Like what 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 gives a person the mind to be like if you scratchy and you sound a mess basically, what gives you the mind to be like, Oh, I sound I'm great. I sound good. Does what, that come what, from what what makes a person do that? Yeah, like prime example, like these 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 live singing shows. And I know some of it and a lot of it is staged and, and they you know, they do all that kind of stuff, but their parents on there are like, Hey, you sound amazing, baby. Um, and we're listening like well, again, you don't sound, you know, what, what, what's happening? Delusion. <laughs> so you would call that delusion? I, I think it's, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just wondering. I'm just getting, I'm just getting thoughts here. So I get it. Okay. I, I can agree I, with delusion. I, I would call it delusion. I, I think, um, again, I, I applaud every person who says, L let me record myself so I can hear what the world hears. Because it's not about if it feels good. Everybody feels good when they're singing in the shower. They feel good when they're singing along with their music on the radio. And people go, I, you know, I sing really well when I'm singing along with the song on the radio. But as soon as I turn it off, I don't, it does, I don't sound good anymore. And I don't know why. Well, no, you always sounded like that. You just couldn't <laughs> hear it because you were singing with the song. Like, let's, let's. I got to start with reality. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, I, can't that... in, I can't live in your alternate universe and help you. We I... Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love it. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes sense. So you've developed, this person has developed a confidence because you've sang with the radio for, for the certain amount of, certain amount of time. And now that you're out here by yourself, it's just kind of like, nah, this is what it's been. This is what it's always been. I get it. 
I get it. Let me see. I saw a question on here. Um, SB, David, you, you, you always look like you're leading the vocalist when you're singing with others. What is your leadership style when working with other vocalists? Um, Are you a vocal arranger, producer? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, um, typically, typically, as of late, um, so I can go two different ways with this. As of late, though, the, the people that I've sang with, like, they're, they're amazing singers. So it makes the job a whole lot easier. Um, so my biggest, my biggest uh, project or biggest thing is, is working on blend, working on um, uh, just making sure we mesh well together and form and stuff like that. Um, but when it comes to church and um, leading choirs and dealing with choirs and, and you know, typical people, not typical people, but other people who may not be professional singers. Um, it is a little different, you know, you, you kind of, you, you do the best you can with what you have. <laughs> Whew, I'm not even going to go there. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I remember my coach had me hold two sheets of paper in front of my ears when I sang to hear more closely how others hear me. There was definitely differences, but I didn't sound like someone else. Well, that's good. That means you had a good idea of how you sounded in beginning, to begin with. What do you do to prepare for a performance the day of? I can answer that. You can answer that. I try not to speak at all. You know, I, I try, try to get up yeah. early enough. It takes about an hour to do my makeup. So that's an hour of me just focusing on myself and not talking yeah. to nobody else. I can't take phone calls while I'm doing my makeup because that's going to make it take longer. And then <laughs> I'm drinking my tea or I'm drinking my, um, uh, like a smoothie. I, I pretty much don't eat dairy anyway. Like I just make sure that my, that I've had something um, nutritious or something that just, I try to have my stomach near empty or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you definitely have to take out at least an hour just for yourself to send to yourself. But go ahead. Mine is, mine is definitely the same. Um, but it just with the dairy stuff that I just recently started noticing that it, it, it plays a factor on my vocals. Um, so now I don't like now when I know I have to sing, I'm, I'm not doing dairy. I haven't completely stopped doing dairy. <laughs> but when I know that I have something coming up, I will like two days, two or three days before I'm not doing any dairy. Good um, on the, on the day of on the day of I'm definitely typically trying to be quiet. I'm doing more mock sound checks, um, just trying to give it give as least um, but effective as I can. Um, me, I'm a very introverted person, so I'm I, I do well. I do well with silence. I do well with space. <laughs> I do well, you know, with 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 a long time. So that's me. It's like game day. You just like you're just like you're running, like you said, marking. You're like marking it yeah. in your head, like you're going over things mentally. Like, okay, I think I want to do that there. I think I want to let me make sure my voice is kind of agile still. You're kind of warming yeah. up a little bit, but you're not you're not over singing because you really. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm big on creating moments, you know what I'm yeah, saying? As absolutely. though, like, you want to create that moment in the moment, you know in what I'm saying? You want to yeah. be like, well, dang! like, you yeah. might, you know. <laughs> well, this just happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, absolutely. That's good. Absolutely. You guys have great questions. Somebody said, tell me that doing makeup helps my singing, and I'm going to be RuPaul tomorrow. <laughs> that that wasn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. Somebody yeah, said, on behalf of the church choir singers, thanks for being patient with us. <laughs> Absolutely. We love y'all. Silence with other people in the room, my unfavorite. You have to. The thing, I, I mean, you, you have to do it. Like, once you get really serious about your voice, and, and especially if you're the one leading, you have to sing to yourself. You, you can't be, yeah, 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 up until you have to sing. Like, uh-uh. Because -uh. you're, you're going to be tired, man. You're going to be You're going to be tired. You're going to be unfocused. Yep. Especially, and then if you're you're gonna have... especially if you're being an artist. If, if you're maybe being a worship leader and, yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're singing like, you know, um, He's Able or something, a song you've sung a million <laughs> times. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right. You know, who cares? You know, yeah. it's, it's so ingrained in you at that point. But if you're trying, like, like the things you do with, with Toby, there, yeah. this is like the, you have to sing it as if you've been singing it a million times and you're trying to create a moment. You can't be just 
out there. Cat, cat, cat. Yeah, the last, the last show we did, the, the recorded pandemic, I didn't have a voice the day of the show. Um, so the, I've been hoarse four times. That was four times. Wow. Um, but that's, I hadn't done any singing. You know, we had been in a pandemic, so I hadn't, and we went in like the, 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 a week or two before, just full fledged. And by the time I got to the show, I was like, David, you know better, dog. You was just too excited to be here, apparently. You know, um, so I really didn't. I, feel like I had people to. Are dragging you. What they say? Who, oh, Justin? I feel like these Justin. people are heckling you. Oh, this Justin. Justin said David, DMW takes more than an hour. You would know, bro. It was takes some hours. Oh, they <laughs> tripping. <laughs> Do I ever critique Toby? Do I ever critique Toby on rehearsal? What do you mean? What does that Why mean? Do that? I don't know what that really means. Like, I guess that's a no. Uh, I they mean, want we, criti sing. we critique they want each other. Sing. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, okay. they don't. Okay. I'm working on place with this. <laughs> Places in my voice, just really familiarizing myself with my voice. Yeah, you can talk to that. Talk about uh, muscle memory. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Come on. Come on. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. It's after 10 over on this side. Hey. Uh, no. This was, so so, oh. so. Um. Oh yeah, Toby and Toby and I, we go we go back and forth about that. Um, but I don't think you would call it critique. I think it's more yeah. of a collaboration. And Definitely collab. Uh, just questions like we. There you go. Sharpening is is the perfect way to say it. Um, because he doesn't profess to be a singer, <laughs> by any means. You know. Um, but he's musical. You know what I'm saying. So he does it. Oh, they want me to keep singing. Go for it. Come on. I surrender all. What is all this? Is this, is this your mic? Yes. <laughs> to be my blessed savior. savior. Yes. I surrender. Surrender all. Uh, Justin, that's good. He said, "Have you have you implemented stretching pre-show?" I haven't. I don't stretch often. Um, oh, I've I seen do. It done, though. I've seen it done. I do. I have to. It's like you think that's it. Athletic activity. Yeah, because sometimes the room is cold. Number one. Yeah. Do you, so. You think you think that's a good tension releaser? Huge to me, like yoga and singing go hand in hand. Even nice. if it's not yoga, just stretching in general. <sighs> like good practice is like at the beginning of every vocal lesson, we're supposed to do like stretches. Like okay, let's do this, let's do that, because our body is holding tension, right? Yeah. And so it's our job to release as much tension as possible. So I mean, if you do uh, some jumping jacks, some jogging in place, some planks, some push ups some whatever just to get your blood flowing and get everything relaxed you know that's, yeah. that's everything's just going to open up so much faster your voice is going to get warm because now your whole body is warm yeah so okay. it helps warm up your voice faster as well you're not just focused on singing and hoping that your diaphragm is gonna connect to the breath properly like it just happens because you put your 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 heart rate is up so once your yeah. heart rate is up your body needs more oxygen everything just kind of starts coordinating by itself I like it. Yep. I, I concur. Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> you said you had to sing one time after a chiropractor appointment, and I was shocked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm so sorry, but my phone is at 10%. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've been on here. It's been good. We've been on here for over an hour. This is great. Has it been over an hour? That's it's, what's yes, up. Dang. I, mean, I don't think I've ever gone live. I know. I've never gone live this long, ever. This is so uh, I, good. I, 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 this is probably my second second live that I've ever done. Oh, my Not goodness. Not ever done, Thank but like this. Me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I appreciate yeah, for sure. blessing me. Thank you so much. You're amazing. I don't know if you're open to... Uh, 
these people are still asking questions. So if can they send oh, yeah. them to you? Or you can send them to me if they're for me. What's up, Kenneth Mosley? Yeah, sure. I mean, the thing is, if I plug in my phone, it's going to get weird. Oh, do you want to answer them? You can answer them. No, no, no. I, if we can... Uh, <laughs> just I'm going to be honest. I'm probably not going to answer. You say what? I'm probably not going to answer. I plug <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's all good. Turned it into a series. That's funny. Turn it into a series. Hey, that's yeah. what's up, SV. I appreciate that. I'm trying. I'm working on it, bro. I'm working on so, the whole. So do we have, do you have an, an, getting a, to a know. date for your EP? Um, We are trying to release a single. This is first just in. We're trying to release a single uh, before the end of the year. Nice. We love it. Why are they calling? Okay, they're saying on that Velvet Vocals EP. Is that what it's called? No, Velvet it's Vocals? not called Velvet Vocals. Oh, I'm like uh, that's the second time. But that's you said but that. that's that's my that's my hashtag Velvet Vocals. Oh, I'm just like what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. ETA. Well, it was such a pleasure. You are lovely. Um, Thank you. Um, your wife is lovely. Your son is lovely. Your voice is lovely. Thank you for bringing us beautiful music. We love your work, your calling, your ministry, all of that. You're awesome. Thank you. all Thank everybody. I appreciate the support. I appreciate uh, you taking time out to to talk to me. Uh, it was good. I learned a lot. And, oh. you know, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, too. I look forward to hearing more from you. Got Absolutely. Bye. All right. Peace, y'all.